Hi everyone, India's largest private bank HDFC has released the results for Q1 2024. At the surface, the results look good. Most channels have given a positive coverage. In this video, we'll go through quickly the key numbers, whether the bank is looking better than it was last quarter, last year or not. First of all, note that the comparison of this quarter with the previous year on year quarter is not actually a valid comparison. For the simple reason, the merger between HDFC Bank and HDFC Limit is dated 1st July. So these numbers are pre-merger, these numbers are post-merger. The numbers of this quarter versus previous quarter which ended in March 2024 are comparable. So if anyone says 12370 crore has become 16474 crore, that's not a good comparison. But 17622 crore reducing to 16474 crore that's a valid comparison because the companies are same now the key earnings for the bank are interest earned that has increased from 79.433 crore to 81.546 crore however that is predominantly on the base of income on investments not on the income from the core business which has actually reduced a bit so this portion alone is responsible for about 1500 crore bump up which is reflecting in this growth all other numbers are insignificant. Now, other income is the highest in Q4. So, 44,957 crore has reduced to 35,450 crore. One of the big problems here is the premium and other operating income from insurance business has reduced considerably 22,800 crores to 14,606 crore. Now, total income which is 1 plus 2 that has reduced from 1,24,391 crore to 1,16,996 crores. Operating expenses have reduced. Now, this is a little tricky. Let me explain. Employee cost has gone down considerably. 9422 crore has gone down to 8289. That is nearly a drop of 1200 crores. That's a big number. Now, there are two things which have happened. One is HDFC has reduced the exit period for its employees in the previous quarter from three months to one month, which means anyone who had resigned or who resigns now, they can leave in 30 days. This even applies for involuntary attrition. If someone is fired from the bank, they will only be serving a notice or the bank will be incurring only the cost for 30 days. One more thing is bank has issued 1 crore new shares as ESOPs to its employees, but that is not added here. So basically what they have done is the employees they want in the bank, they have been given good ESOPs which will mature in future. Their cost has not accrued yet. But the path to exit for the people who are kind of optional that has been reduced or made less costly. Also the claims part of insurance business that has reduced. That's a nearly 1100 crore reduction. That is showing in reduction of operating expenses. So total expenses have gone down from 92,800 crore to 91,126 crores. Now note that bank has reduced the provisions considerably by nearly 10,000 crores. 13,810 crore has reduced to 3143 crore. So when we calculate profit, it is 7 minus 8 minus 9. The 8 provision is reduced by 10,000 crore here. So profit from ordinary activities increases by 10,000 crore just by managing the provisions, reducing them. This is only based upon board's approval. This increases the profit from ordinary activities before tax and minority interest by nearly 5,000 crores. This equates against tax expenses 5539 crore. As a result, the net profit has reduced from 18012 crore to 17188 crore. Eventually, net profit for the period is appearing as 17622 crore, reducing to 16474 crore, leading to EPS reduction net net on Q on Q basis after dilution 23.12 has reduced to 21.59. So what mattered in the p in the end was not actually business numbers. They were here and there okay only. Tax expenses and provisions, these have made the major difference to the net earning per share or the net profit. This is the 1 crore excess share I was talking about which have been issued to the employees. Now if you note that the assets column 40,30,194 crore has nearly remained unchanged 46,537 crore. This is despite a tremendous growth in the stock market. HDFC as a holding company owns nearly 5 lakh crore worth of equity in other companies. Despite this large holding, this column has not changed. What has actually happened is, if HDFC owned say 5 lakh worth of stocks earlier, this suppose becomes 7 lakh crore in this quarter. This is just a fictitious number. 
let's say this was A and this was B. So net size of the investment was A plus B. What they have done is they have sold off stocks worth B. They have booked profits. That too in companies which I would probably not sell. For example, REC. For example, the defense stocks. Many of these companies are sold in HDFC's portfolio that the dividend yield is perhaps more than what they earn from core business. I don't see any point in booking profits in those stocks unless it's a desperate move to move this B to the balance sheet as profit other income to make the balance sheet look at least a little prettier than what it would have been without this number B. Whatever was the principal recovered that has been used to buy more stocks of course so overall investment portfolio remains same which is reflecting in the asset values remaining nearly same see the investments nearly unchanged values now i don't think this move would have been made if the business was firing in all cylinders or if it was doing good if the normal balance sheet would have been fine so if you try and find that money which they got from the sale of shares that's probably gonna appear maybe here or here despite that the total income is lesser than what it was last quarter think of what it would have been without that share sale so if you don't compare it with the june quarter results of last year results to me look not good at all now the bank's problems are not simple to solve the biggest problem for the bank is casa that is not just hdfc bank's problem hdfc bank has a larger problem with casa than other banks because hdfc is used to cheap casa easy casa for decades where people's trust has been highest on HDFC bank, suddenly this CASA is moving to bonds A, second is equity, direct or via mutual funds. Both SEBI and RBI have been talking about it. There is no solution to it. People are making more money in bonds and equity. Why would they put money in current account, FDs, RDs, saving bank accounts? Now in Western countries, this problem is solved via something called securitization. It is there a bit in India also but not that mature to my understanding. Now note that abuse of securitization led to the 2008 mortgage crisis globally especially in UK and US. So we have to obviously avoid that. But this is the only way in my opinion to create bonds out of real estate which is a hard asset owned by banks till the property is mortgaged. Now the problem is that the value of real estate has gone up so much in cities like Bangalore, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Pune, Delhi that it is already a bubble if it bursts then this will become a crisis just like the 2008 crisis that is why probably rbi and cb would be hesitant right now rbi has reduced the ticket size for many many bonds first from 10 lakh to 1 lakh and now it has already announced that this will get reduced further to 10,000, which will make even cheaper investments into bonds feasible so this problem is only to get worse one thing i'm increasingly seeing is microfinance is penetrating deeper it is coming out from villages to tier 3 and tier 2 towns also. Microfinance lending rates are higher about 20 to 22 percent. Banks are not able to compete with them on lending rate. As a result, microfinance companies, small finance banks, they are able to give higher returns, especially FDs, especially FDs and bonds. They are able to give anywhere between 10 to 12 percent. People don't know how to evaluate the risk and a lot of money is getting into these instruments. This is affecting the bank's businesses across India, not just HDFC. For this quarter, I don't think the results are good. The comparison being made by many analysts as per reports I have seen, they are in my opinion wrong because they are comparing it to the wrong base completely without any disclaimer. This can get misleading for most public unless I understood it wrong. Note that I am not an RIA, so please don't make any investment decision based upon this video. The only purpose of this video is to educate you in helping you understand the results better. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.